Welcome everybody to this edition of Jump Around Weekly. We are at the end of November, November 30th. Um, and again, uh, I'm very fired up for this guest. Uh, he's one of our own, uh, one of our Badger greats. This is a football Badger. Uh, please welcome to our show, Tarek Sala. Tarek, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great, Coach Bono. Thanks for having me on. I'm fired up. Yeah, yeah. So, so Tarek and I, uh, we, we are neighbors up here in Wanake, and um, I got to know him a little bit during quarantine, and now he's become, uh, he's become a confidant, he's become a workout partner, uh, he's become a, an awesome friend of mine, and we've told some stories, and uh, the things he's learned at UW and his career are going to be an awesome, uh, uh, it's an awesome thing for a lot of our fans, uh, UW, no matter what sport it is to hear about, so uh, we're fired up, Tarek, you ready to roll? I'm ready, got my workout in, coach, this morning, so. <laughs> I'm ready for you. I'm ready for today, and I'm ready for the next workout. Yeah, I, I know he is, too. I see him. I see him. You know what I like about Tark too? He's not one of these guys that, uh, you know, he's not one to go to these foo-foo clubs and get a little workout. This guy's on the road. I see him out there running out there, uh, uh, grinding it. One time, actually, he was running. Uh, he was jogging, and I ran up behind him. I actually ran at the same time, and I ran up behind him, and uh, it was it, it was, it was uh, it, it, I was out of breath because I saw him really far, about a half mile out, and I had to sprint to catch up to him yeah, and, then I, I, and then I still couldn't catch him. He pulled away. No, from you me. crushed me, man. You crushed me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but awesome dude. So let's get going. Hey, uh, for everybody that, uh, that, what that, that, uh, didn't know Tark is, is, is from, uh, Connecticut, uh, was recruited here to play football. Um, and, and really, really Tark for you, for, for everybody out there, why, why UW, why'd you come all the way from Connecticut to UW? Well, I gotta tell you, it started with the coaching staff. Uh, getting to meet uh, Coach Palermo, Coach Alvarez, uh, Coach Ionello, who was the recruiting coordinator, and just get, and that was just basically on the phone. I didn't, I didn't really know where Wisconsin was, right? I just knew it was uh, west of Connecticut, and uh, I, I just got to uh, believe in, in the coaching staff. You know, Coach Alvarez came from Notre Dame at a winning tradition there, obviously, needless to say, and then, you know, he, he really convinced me to come out and take a visit. When I took the visit and I met the kids, uh, the student athletes, uh, the guys on, on the football team and got to see the campus. There is no better campus in the world. And, and the kids uh, represent that. And they're just smart, tough, dependable kids. It hasn't changed in 25 years, man. It just the culture that has been built here is, is strong. And uh, I was grateful that I, I made the choice. I had the opportunity to come here and play and go to school and get a degree. Awesome. So, hey, Coach Alvarez is a legend. Everybody knows. Tell us you know, the inside scoop on what, what was it really like to play for Coach Alvarez? What, how did he get you guys fired up? And, and, and uh, you know, how, how was it? I know that being around him now uh, a little bit, listening to some stories around him, I think he's a guy I would love to play for. And, uh, you know, the old school mentality. So talk, talk a little bit about what it was like playing for Coach. Well, I think it's that blue collar uh, work ethic that, that shined through. You know, he, he, was, he, he, was, he believed in being prepared. Uh, we had long, tough practices. Uh, we hit as much as anybody. We were physical. We were smart. And, uh, you know, you could depend on us. You know, some of the things we talked about were love, trust, commitment, and belief. Those were kind of the pillars uh, that were, uh, you know, cemented. And, you know, we didn't have to talk about them all the time, but they were up on the wall. And, then, you know, when you, ever, you go in that meeting room all the time and you, and you see that, you know, that kind of it, it gets into you. But Co Coach Alvarez, uh, you know, he, he drove us hard. But, uh, you know, in the end, you knew he cared about us and he had, he had a toughness about him and in and, and a way that he went about his business, way he went about his business that that reflected onto us and uh, just made us better players, better people, uh, better students. It was it was great playing for him. Awesome. So uh, a lot of a lot of you, you were one of the best. Um, I know linebackers at UW. Then you switched out to uh, defensive end towards the end of your career. Um, Tell me who, what quarterback was one of your favorite quarterbacks just to sack, just to, where, how, 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 tell me, tell me, uh, I know how you defensive guys love to get to the quarterback and uh, give him a shot. Who, who was your, the best guy you like to get after? Well, there's a guy in Michigan named Todd Collins. He played about 15 years in the NFL, uh, played with the <laughs> Buffalo Bills for a long time. We got after him one day. Um, back when you could really hit the quarterback, you know, and not get called for it. Yeah. So I bet you we would have got a couple of targeting penalties back then. But uh, <laughs> we got after him, beat him in the big house. Uh, they had a very talented team that year. Um, and we had a talented team, too, uh, coming off the Rose Bowl year. And we went to the Hall of Fame Bowl that year. But we, I sacked him twice. And I think, 
you know, we had probably had three other sacks and we get after him pretty good. Other guys were Wally Richardson, who was at Penn State uh, after Kerry Collins and Tony Banks, who was at Michigan State. Uh, we got after him one day and, and, and really had a field day on him. But, you know, those guys were great players, right? You want to sack the best. Uh, and those are the best players in the Big Ten. And sacking those guys uh, made it a lot of fun. Awesome. Let me let me get one more question here and then I'll turn it over to Johnny. But um, tell me about the Rose Bowl, man. And I know we talk about that a lot around here is the, the tradition in, in um, that really turned turned um, you guys really turned this athletic department around. Um, tell me how special it was to play, um, you know, that Rose Bowl year. Tell me tell me tell me everything about that. And, uh, you know, how special it was for Coach Alvarez and you and, wow. and the team. Yeah, it was truly special. You know, going back that they, they weren't in a, the, the Badgers. We haven't been in a bowl game in, I don't know, 12 years, right? We never won the Rose Bowl. They've been the three or four of them. Uh, 1963 was the last bowl game, the last Rose Bowl that they played in. And now 30 years later, uh, we, we were just trying at the beginning of the year, I think, to go to a bowl game that was legit, you know, a New Year's Day bowl game and, you know, and try and win the Big Ten, um, even though, you know, there, it was a tall mountain to climb, right? But we took one day at a time and kind of had that blue collar mentality. You know, Coach Alvarez kind of coined this team, the the, uh, the lunch pail gang, you know, your hard hat and your shovel and you just go out there every day and grind grind it out. And, you you, you know, you you work to you know, win, win each game, one game at a time. And then, you know, through that year, we had some huge wins. And then we had one game to earn the right to win the big 10 and then get to the Rose bowl. And that was against Michigan state. And that was in Japan, which is absolutely a crazy trip right now. And, and looking back, they probably didn't want to play that in Japan, but that's where it was. So coach, coach Alvarez, you talk about preparation. Uh, coach tries to get an edge. He, uh, he told us he researched NASA and <laughs> looked at uh, time travel, whatever, uh, you know, and how you change uh, zones and, we're going out to Japan and here's what we're going to do. We're going to stay up late and we're going to practice at night. We're like, we're doing all these crazy things. And he's like, basically, listen, we got to get on their time zone. So when we go there, we're going to stay up all through the trip and we're not going to sleep. And when we get there, it's going to be midnight and we're going to wake up in the morning and we're going to practice and we'll be right on their time zone. And if we do that, we'll give ourselves the best chance to win. And, and then he goes, you know, watch the other guys, watch Michigan State. They'll be sleeping all the way over there. They'll be screwed up in their whole sleep. They won't adapt. They won't, they won't change and they won't be ready to play. And, you know, on that trip, we were all on the same plane and we were on the upper deck and lower deck. And who knew that planes could have an upper and lower deck back then. Right. But they did. So, you know, a few of us got to go downstairs, watch the, see what the Michigan state guys were doing. They were all sleeping halfway wow. through. So I, I say we beat them on the way over because coach Alvarez had us prepared and he got the edge on that trip. Uh, and, and so we were in a dog fight over there, even though they had a very talented team. So they, they didn't have as much to play for, but they had, you know, arguably probably 12 NFL players, several first round picks. And um, Jim Miller was a quarterback played for the bears and we had a dog fight, but we were, we were tougher. They were than they were, we were more prepared. So we, we won that. And then coming back uh, you know, obviously we didn't sleep much. And then we're coming back from Chicago, we flew into O'Hare. Uh, we hit the uh, Wisconsin line and it was just lined up with people from Wisconsin. It gives me goosebumps to this oh, day. Wow. And then driving in, drove the bus into the stadium at like 11 at night and 40,000 fans were in the stadium. It was just a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, win and opportunity to go to the Rose Bowl. And I can go on about the Rose Bowl, but, you know, we won that game and it was just a special moment in, in history. And, and I'll forever be grateful for being a part of it. Man, that, that gives me goosebumps. That gives me goosebumps. Yeah. I, I, I want to talk a little bit, Tarek, about, about the, just the, the mindset. You go back to talking about Coach Alvarez, that lunch pail gang type mentality. Um, just kind of talk a little bit about the mindset. D dive a little bit deeper into that. And, you know, I know you speak a lot about excellence and, and, and kind of that being the, the, the thing in your mindset. Kind of, kind of talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, you know, you had to earn everything you, you, you got. You know, you had to go out and work hard. And, and you, you actually had to be uh, comfortable being uncomfortable. You might have heard that before. Um, you know, everybody's competing. Everybody's challenging each other from the coaches to the players. And not, you know, not only on the field, but in the classroom. Um, you know, and I, he, he asked a lot of you. But with that, you know, he, he cared about you. So it, it was a culture that was built that, uh, 
you know, that love, trust, commitment, belief, you know, it, it may sound cliche, but it's really the, the framework of any organization. It's a framework of your family. Um, and, and then, you know, there's a price to pay, you know, and, and especially if you want to be successful. And we talk a lot about that, you know, paying a price uh, for success and putting the work in and, and, you know, kind of sum, surmise that it's, a, it's hard, right? And nothing comes without some pain, right? And we embraced it. We embraced the grind and we were just, we were a tough group. And, you know, if you lined us up, you know, in shorts and you put you, the UCLA 93, 94 Rose Bowl team and lined us up, you wouldn't, you wouldn't pick us to win that game. You know, they had a, they had a lot of guys that were NFL players. They were you know, better looking, they had better bodies, all that stuff. We were just, you know, blue collar lunch pail guys coming out, smashing, smashing the mouth. And, um, we're going to outwork you and out tough you. And, and um, you know, I just think we, we reflect not only the, the Badger athletic program well, but we reflect Wisconsin really well. We're just hard-nosed, tough, tough people, and we're going to bring it every time. And, you know, I think that's proven well for the Badger, Badger program, Badger athletics. I think it's, it's, it, it's throughout the whole athletic department. And, uh, like, Coach Bono's got his guys going and wrestling. I know a lot of other programs are successful and I, I, I love to see it and uh, I'm grateful that I was a part of it and I carry it forward in my life now. Absolutely. Now that's great. Talk a little bit about that kind of mentality and how you carried that into your, to your NFL career and how that helped you oh. at the, the time at uh, Wisconsin, how it kind of formed you into that, that powerhouse NFL player. Well, it, it, you know, it's awesome because uh, you know, coming in, coming from Connecticut to Wisconsin and, and, and going into a D one program, you know, Connecticut was a small, small high school football, and they go into that environment. You know, it was really competitive, and obviously, all the things I talked about when I went to the NFL, I had to go from essentially a defensive end, outside rusher, to an outside linebacker, and I had to play in coverage, and I had to do a lot of things, and it it, it was difficult, but nothing was as difficult for me as the transition from high, you know, my senior year of high school to my freshman year, and 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 uh, you know, Coach Alvarez and Coach Palermo and the staff. You were hard on me, right? It broke you down. Like, you know, it was almost like the, the Marines. If You know, I never were in the Marines, but you, you, you hear about it. And then I thought that, that made me tough and smart and dependable and be able to, to uh, acclimate to whatever situation comes my way. So then you go into that environment in the NFL, and it's like, it's crazy. You know, it's, a, it's just, a, you know, you have all these great athletes, everybody competing. And you're just fighting every day for your spot. And I swear, the first three years of my career, I was probably the bottom 10%. And, you know, whether it was a play here or work ethic or showing up, being, being just smart, tough, and dependable, I think that's what got me on, you know, on that roster. Um, and then, you know, my third year, though, part of that journey was getting selected in the uh, expansion draft for the Browns. And we show up in a 75-yard indoor facility – and there's like 120 guys there and barely room to, you know, you're in a phone booth and it's all live and we're only in helmets. And it's just like a big brawl just to, just to make the team. And, and I'm in there slugging it out with everybody, not afraid of anybody. And, and, you know, I'm learning the, obviously the, the playbook and going and doing all these things. And it was daunting and it was, it was tough, but, you know, reflecting back all the stuff that coach Alvarez and, Coach Palermo and, and, and the staff taught me and, and, and my teammates made me resilient and I was able to uh, persevere and I was able to make that team that year and I played two more years for the Browns. Uh, so certainly uh, I attribute a lot of my success success in the NFL to what I was what I was taught at University of Wisconsin. That's great. That's great. I got one last question for you, Tark. I, I've heard a couple stories over this quarantine and, and Coach Bono, you can jump in here with me. Um, I heard you and Coach Bono work out together. Uh, talk a little bit about your workouts. I heard there was a hill sprint um, workout that you guys did. Uh, talk a little bit about that. And uh, does Coach Bono still got it? I got to know. Oh, man, he's got it. I, you know, I stuck with him for about 10 yards, right? I, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, man, he took off. He's like a jitterbug. Boom. He starts <laughs> flying up the hill. And, uh, oh, my gosh. You know, and I, I think I made it. Th this hill is like 125 yards, and it's, it's steep. And uh, I made it up three hills uh, back, you know, and you get it all the way down. And, man, he just kept going. I think he did six or seven hills, and I was down to three. But you know what? I was in it and, and grinding. And uh, I was probably out later the night before. And, you know, <laughs> and I was probably tired. But, uh, you know, what else are you going to do during That's quarantine? Right. 
That's right. <laughs> hey, that's awesome. That's awesome. The Hill's great. He's been telling me about the Hill for a long time. We finally got a chance to do it this, this summer. So now yeah. we got, now we got to do it when it gets down to negative 10 degrees. That's how we get tough, Tark. We'll go out there. Yeah, right no there. question. Cool, right. That's the price um, you've got to pay, man. You got to get right. out there. Amen. Hey, uh, I got two more questions. One's a good one. And then one will get kind of serious. Um, Chris McIntosh, right? First round draft yep. pick, right? Am I right? First round? Yep. First yep. round draft pick, Seattle, Seattle Dog. Seahawks. Um, offensive lineman, Chris McIntosh in his prime. Tark Sala yep. in his prime. You have to get to the quarterback to win the game. He has to not let you get there. Who's winning that battle? Well, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to admit to losing to anyone, but no, <laughs> uh, I, I'll, I'll do it because I'll have to trick him into something, you know what I mean? Or, you know, kick him in the groin or something to get around him, but uh, I'll find a way, I'll find yeah. a way, but he, I got to tell you, he's one of the best offense, offense tackles ever played college football, in my opinion. Yeah. And uh, that would be a huge challenge. And, and, you know, he was like two years younger than me and, I was so glad he came to Wisconsin because uh, he was a big part of the last couple of years that I was there. And then he went on to win two Rose Bowls. I mean, one of the greatest leaders in the history of the Wisconsin athletic program. Um, and obviously he's taking a big role now in athletics, but his, his work ethic, his toughness, and, and, and he's incredibly smart. Um, he is, uh, he represents all what Wisconsin's all about. And, and uh, I'm proud to have been able to call myself a teammate of his and, and I'm proud of what he's doing for the University of Wisconsin. So, Amen. It's, Us it's too. A pretty, it's a great relationship. Us too. And you know what? I guarantee I know if I asked him the same question, he'd say he'd do whatever it took to stop you. Hey, yeah. Hey, no, he's no right? he's a true throwback. Yeah. Right. True throwback. <laughs> he would do whatever it would take. I know it. But all right. Hey, last last question from us. Then we'll maybe get into some fan stuff. But Tark, here's, here's uh, really why we do this thing in college athletics and uh, why we recruit people. You know, I know. Um, I, you know, if you were a wrestler, I'd be, I'd be coming right after you every day with your, uh, um, you know, I've gotten to know you, your mentality and all that. You would have been a heck of a wrestler for uh, uh, any Division One program. But um, how did the University of Wisconsin um, set you up for life after athletics, after your pro career? Um, well, I, I think it's the intangibles. Um, you know, obviously the school is, 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 if you look in the dictionary under, uh, you know, university and campus life, it's there. But, you know, it's the culture that was built, uh, built by Coach Alvarez. It's the, the teammates that I had that, that had similar uh, values, um, different, different, all different walks of life, right? So a diverse uh, group of people, but similar work ethic and toughness, and they cared about each other. And, and through all the competition that we had with each other and against others, you know, be, being in the foxhole together, uh, and, and again, coupled with that work ethic and toughness and, and, you know, asking a lot of you both, you know, on the field or, you know, on the mat or in the classroom, uh, that, that challenged you, made you a little uncomfortable or a lot uncomfortable, but, you know, that's life, you know, and, and now I, I'm just used to being uncomfortable and I embrace it. So I look for new challenges, whether it's selling a new product or, you know, getting on the radio or meeting new people, I'm, I'm, I'm resilient. I'm fearless. Um, you know, it doesn't mean I'm not, you know, I, I, I could be scared, but I'm, I'm fearless. I'm ready to go dive in and get after it. And I think that's what University of Wisconsin prepared me for. And, and I take that, I try and pass it down to my kids. And uh, I believe it's the, it's the way to go about it. So it's, it, it's meant everything to me in my life, whether at work or, or with my family, I feel, uh, I feel I could go through anything and, and I may win or lose, but I'm going to keep on going, man. So I love it. Let's go. I love it. All right, Jess, do we have anything? Yeah. From fans actually kind of along the same theme, what's your advice for current Badgers in developing that kind of mindset or how they can find success through their career here at, in at Wisconsin? Well, I, I think they have a huge opportunity here at Wisconsin. I, I think it's about, you know, you know, obviously the work ethic and, 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 you know, following your coaches, uh, taking care of your schoolwork, you know, and being a good citizen off the field. I, I think there's so much opportunity, so many people that, you know, after your career, you know, want to help you, you know, go reach out, go meet as many people as you can do the right thing. Uh, I believe, I believe in karma, you know, it, it, what goes around comes around. I got really involved with the Ronald McDonald house and I got to meet some of those families going through some tough times. Um, 
And, you know, 10 years, 20 years later, people go, hey, I remember you You came out there and, and spent some time there in the Ronald McDonald house. Well, that that was that I, I, it was priceless to me. I mean, I, I, I'm so grateful that I did that. I, you know, I think it was partly, uh, Alvarez, you know, encouraged us to be a part of his volunteering. And then my, my parents believed in giving back. So then I did it. And later on, it's like, wow, I mean, it, that's what you need to do. And I try, we try and get involved here in the community still. I'm with the, the NFL alumni uh, association of Madison. And uh, we do a lot for caring for kids. What goes around comes around. So I just say, keep on meeting people, be a good person. Uh, and, things will work out for you. It's, it, it goes a long way. And for you coming from Connecticut to Wisconsin and then going into several years in the NFL, you lived in a variety of places. What made you want to return to this area and the region? And what, what was special about Madison and this part of, of South Central Wisconsin that drew you back? Well, Connecticut's a great place. I love to go to visit, uh, but I built a lot of great relationships here. And as when I came back, when I, I came back to train for a little bit in the event, I would get signed back up again. But again, five years is probably enough for me. Uh, after you know, it was pretty banged up. And then I had a great network. And I don't know, a lot of people know this, but you know, I, Wisconsin has uh, a lot of ingenuity, entrepreneurship. Uh, there's a lot of uh, industries here from here up to Fox Valley. Um, you know, there's a lot of opportunity. So that opportunity brought me back along with some great relationships. That is awesome. You're the man. I can't wait to go to practice and, and visit the uh, Badger wrestling team. When we get back into this thing. Uh, I told you, you're giving that pregame speech when we get back on the mat. So I know you got it written up and ready to roll. You bet, man. You bet. We're ready. Fired up. All right, Tark, hey. dude, I really appreciate you coming on, man. Um, you know, I can't wait to see you out on the road. I'm about to go get my workout in right now. I might run well. by your house and try to pull you out, but. If you're, yeah. uh, if, if, if you're on the couch, just uh, don't open the door. Well, it's, it's all right. You come by anytime. I look forward to getting together next time. I got my Badger game day shirt on. Let's go Badgers. Hopefully we get another game in Saturday and uh, beat the Hoosiers and uh, go Badgers. Thank you very much. Yeah, all right. You're the man. So everybody, thanks for listening in. Tark Sala, one of the best to ever do it here at the University of Wisconsin. Um, so make sure, as always, start your week off right and jump around.